Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Very good morning from Lahore and Assalamu Alaikum. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. As I am discussing this asphyxia, and this is the fifth lecture of this series. And the learning objective of today's lecture will be that I will be discussing throttling or manual strangulation in this lecture. And what are the modes of death in throttling? Then what are the autopsy findings which are externally on the body, on the neck and then internal autopsy findings? Then the medical legal importance that means it is homicidal, suicidal or accidental. So starting with the topic manual strangulation which is also called as throttling. It is also called as manual strangulation because the assailant uses his hands to encircle and compress the front and the side of the neck. In this constriction of the neck of a person by another person with one or both hand is throttling. So throttling is manual constriction of the neck of a person by another person with one hand or with both hands. It is common method of homicide. Most often it is encountered when the physical size and the strength of the assailant exceeds that of the victim. That the victim is weak, debilitated, small in size, like children, women. So he compresses the neck of such victim sometimes in the bend of the elbow. If the compression of the neck is achieved by the bend of the elbow and the neck is compressed between the bend of the elbow and this is called as mugging like this that the arm lock the neck is compressed in the arm bend of the arm so mugging sometime it can also be achieved by foot that is the foot is pressed on front foot and pressed on the front of the neck or knee bend bend of the knee is used to compress the neck that is also mugging so the mechanism of death in throttling is either it is hypoxic hypoxia when the fatal period is two minutes or more in this then it can be reflex cardiac arrest that sudden excitation of the carotid bodies and the reflex cardiac arrest and cardiac asystole will be achieved and this causes instantaneous death. Then it can be cerebral hypoxia or ischemia. Now regarding the autopsy findings. They can be divided into externally on the body or injuries on the neck and then internal autopsy findings. Regarding the external findings on the body, in deaths due to reflex cardiac arrest, there will be no positive finding related with the asphyxia. Because of the stimulation of vagus nerve, there is sudden cardiac arrest and no time is has been permitted to develop the signs of asphyxia. Now the external injuries will depend upon the method of throttling and sometimes the resistance which is offered by the victim. Application of force may be with one hand or with the both hands or the forearm. So this you can see the application of force is with the both hands or it is with the one hand. So the changes will depend upon the manner. So the external signs of asphyxia will depend upon, will, will be apparent that is congestion, cyanosis 
and petechial hemorrhage these are non specific asphyxial finds asphyxial signs and they will be prominent and they can be uh, conjunctival hemorrhages congestion and cyanosis of the face and there can be nasal bleed in on the neck you can see the bruises and the nail marks so the extent and pattern of these signs will depend upon the rate of asphyxial process that is how much time or how much forceful compression is if there is partial compression that is the circulation and the respiration is partially going on then there will be intense signs will be seen but if there is tremendous force suddenly compresses the circulation and the uh, respiratory process then little signs will be there so when the constriction force has been considerable the signs will be well marked the tongue may be bruised it may be bitten between the teeth and sometimes protruded there may be injuries on the face chest which indicate struggle that the victim was struggling to save himself the face and eyes may show multiple petechial hemorrhages now regarding the injuries on the neck the situation and extent of the bruised area on the neck will depend upon the relative position of the assailant and the victim then the manner of grasping the neck the degree of pressure which is applied so all these finding will depend upon the force the manner and degree of pressure upon the throat so you can see these bruises and abrasions on the neck the marks of bruising and ecchymosis are usually found on the front and sides of the neck but chiefly they are around the larynx and above it the soft tissue of the neck they are compressed and forced upward and backward against the cervical vertebra they are pushed up and back and compressed so when the force is applied with one hand the front of the victim there will be superficial bruises in consenting abrasions due to finger nails they will be present so when only one hand is used then obliquely directed multiple bruises that is penny bruises they are observed so multiple bruises like four fingers on one side and thumb on one side so multiple bruises on one side due to the finger pads and the finger tips and single larger bruise because of the thumb on the other side if single hand is used to compress the neck <clears throat> like this you can see the uh, finger pads on one side and thumb pad mark bruise on the other side and they are commonly known as penny bruises six penny bruises and this term of six penny bruises is used because of its shape the shape of the bruise was about the size of the six penny coin at older time so that's why it was initially when the description was given they were called six penny bruises so they are basically rounded disc shaped bruises like six penny size so these rounded discoid shape bruises consistent with the manner of grasping will be seen if the grasping is with one hand the multiple or four on one side and one on of thumb on the other side and this other picture showing the same marks but if the assailant changes his hands or uses both hand like he changes his hands or uses both hands then multiple bruises can be seen on both sides of the neck and the bruising caused by the thumb is usually larger than those of the fingers 
Similarly, in addition to bruises, the crescentic abrasion caused by the fingernails, fingernails will be causing crescentic abrasions. They are also seen and that caused by the thumbnail is a deeper and wider because the nail is bigger. So the crescentic abrasion caused by the thumbnail will be larger than those of the fingers. You can see these are the abrasions with one hand if it is used above picture and the lower one is used if the both hands are used. Sometimes the assailant's epidermis tissue is deposited on the neck and this can be proved as a trace evidence. This can be collected and this epidermis of the assailant can be acted as trace evidence and you can find the person. If the soft garments are in between the hands and neck, there will be no external injury. That is intervening hand, if there are soft garments, the marks will be less or there will be no mark. Similarly, the skin on the back of the neck is tough, there will be little bruising in that area. Now regarding the internal injuries. Head and chest are opened first as the principle of asphyxial death is so that the blood can be drained out and now if you will now dissect the neck it will be a bloodless field and injuries can be manifested easily. So neck should, should be opened in V-shape or U-shape manner. The careful dissection layer by layer is carried out. A fine careful dissection will reveal the injuries. Finally, in usual cases where there is constricting force has been considerable, the signs of asphyxia will be well marked and there will be subcutaneous tissues of the neck. They will show bruising, extravasation of the blood beneath the injured areas. Below the neck, if you reflect the neck, you will see the extravasation of the blood. And sometimes these hemorrhages are less as compared to the external injury. That is the external injuries are well marked but when you reflect out the skin, the inner injuries, they are less. But vice versa can happen. Conversely, sometimes there is absence of external injury but internally there will be fatal injury. Much injury will be seen on internal dissection. So the weak area which are liable to fracture are the projections of the laryngeal cartilages and the ends of the hyoid bone. Fracture of the hyoid bone and laryngeal cartilage, it is usually above the age of 40 when they are ossified. The fracture of hyoid bone seldom occurs, rarely occurs in hanging or ligature strangulation, but it is strongly in favor of throttling because direct compression is applied on the neck and inward compression is liable to cause fracture of the hard bone. So the fracture is in the region of the greater corno at the junction of the outer two third and inner one third which is due to the squeezing process and the broken fragments will be displaced inward as the, it is squeezing, so the broken fragments will be displaced inward. Here is the picture, the above picture is normal hyoid bone, body, lesser cornu and greater cornu and the lower side on the left is throttling. That is because of inward compression, the broken segment is displaced inward and on the right lower is showing if in hanging it fractures and because in hanging there is upward and backward push and the fracture segment is displaced outward. So direct lateral compression will lead to inward displacement in throttling and indirect upward and outward pull will be causing the fracture segment to displace outward. Now regarding the medical legal aspects. 
the most important medical legal issue which arises are that whether the death was due to throttling and then if it is throttling it is whether suicidal homicidal or accidental now regarding whether death is due to strangulation or not evidence which are in favor of the throttling are most likely they are bruising due to thumb and the fingers the nail marks and swelling and lividity of the face because the compression will push the fluid uh, blood up and there will be intense congestion of the face also bruising and laceration of the larynx windpipe muscles and vessels in front and the sides of the neck and sometimes the fracture of the greater uh, cornu of the laryngeal and occlusal the hip bone can also be occur but if the direct pressure is on the hip bone it is liable to fracture when age is above 40 now regarding the occurrence that is it is suicidal homicidal or accidental regarding homicidal almost invariably throttling is homicidal in accidental occasional it can occur occasionally but suicidal is not possible because when someone tries to throttle oneself as soon as the unconsciousness supervenes the hand grip will be relaxed and grip will be released so homicidal throttling is common form of murder the victim are usually the infant the children and the women a women sometime may be sexually assaulted and then throttled adults may be throttled when they are under the influence of some drug or they are weak debilitated or some because of some problem they cannot resist then the adults can even be throttled because 15 to 20 second suffocating grip can dispose of a very strong healthy adult only 50 15 to 20 second grip of suffocation disposes of an individual accidental is rare but it can happen sometime in a road traffic accident the steering wheel can be So thank you very much take care allah hafiz i'll continue the topic of throttling in the next please subscribe to my channel and this is my channel name dr javed ikbal kokhar 